in this video, we're going to solve the following logarithmic equations. They also want us to add these solutions together. So it says for each equation, find the sum of all of your solutions. So uh, just whenever we get our answers in the end, they want us to add it together and state that as an answer. So take a look at example A. We have log base 3 of x plus 5 plus log base 3 of x minus 3 is equal to 2. So typically we want our logs to be by itself on one side of the equation, which we already have, which is great. I'm actually going to start by using the product rule uh, for logs to condense this together. So I want to join these two logs together. Since they're the same base, I can do that. And because there's an addition between the two, that correlates to a multiplication, right? This is the product rule for logs, right? So it says that I can do this. I can just take the x plus 5 and multiply it by the x minus 3, and that's going to equal 2. I'm then going to use another rule for logs that says, well, we can then take our base, raise it to this power here, set it equal to what we have here. So that would look like 3 raised to the second power is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 3. And this is the equation that we want to work on solving. So let's do a little bit of cleanup here. 3 squared is equal to 9. When we multiply this out, let's see x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 gives us a negative 3x. Then we get a positive 5x and a minus 15. Let me go ahead and move this 9 over to the other side so that it could be in proper quadratic form. So we also need to combine our two middle terms there. Negative 3x plus 5x is 2x. And this minus 15 minus a 9 gives us a total of minus 24 for our quadratic equation that we need to solve. I'm going to try and factor this here. Um, so let's see. Uh, our first term is x squared, so that factors to x times x. Our last term is 24, so we want factors of 24 that add or subtract to get 2. And I believe for that one, let's see, 4 times 6 would work. 4 times 6 is 24, and 6 minus 4 is 2. So I'm going to use 4 and 6. For our signs here, the 24 is negative, so the only way to get a negative is if you have different signs. Uh, the middle term is positive, though, so uh, whatever sign the middle term has, it has to go with a bigger number. And since we know they have to have different signs, that means the 4 has to be negative. Then our last step here, uh, our zero factor property says that we can split each one of these up, set them each equal to zero, and solve. So we get that x is equal to 4, and we get that x is equal to negative 6. Remember, when it comes to logs, negative answers do not count. So for this one, all we got, or all we have is x minus 4. And because we only have one solution, there's no other solutions for us to add. Remember, this question wanted us to uh, find the sum of all of our solutions. We only have one solution for this one, so our answer is 4 there. Moving on to example B, it looks like we also have our logs together on the left-hand side of the equation, so that's good. So we have an addition going on between these two logs, so that also correlates to the product rule, just like we had over here. So I'm going to condense these two, bring them together by using the product rule for logs that says that we can just multiply these together. x minus 4 times 10 minus x is equal to 3. I'm then going to use our other rule for logs that says I can take my base, raise it to the third power, and it's going to equal all of this. So that looks like 2 raised to the third power is equal to this multiplication here. Doing some cleanup, 2 to the third power is equal to 8. Multiplying here, so I'm going to formal this, so x times 10 is 10x. Outside gives me negative x times x, which is a negative x squared. Inside gives me a negative 40, and last, negative 4 times negative x is a positive 4x. I'm also going to move this 8 over to the other side, and let's combine some like terms to see what we're left with here. So I'm going to drop down the negative x squared. We have 10x and 4x, that gives us 14x. And then we have minus 40 and a minus 8 to give us a minus 48. I 
also see that our x squared is negative. So since our leading coefficient, our leading term is negative, I'm actually just going to divide everything by a negative 1 to get rid of that. I want my leading term to be positive. Um, so I'm going to divide everything by a negative to get rid of that. So when I do that, I get 0 is equal to a positive x squared, a negative 14x, and a positive 48. So we're left with the quadratic equation here also. So I'm going to try and factor this. x times x gives us that x squared. We're looking for factors of 48 that add or subtract to get 14. And I believe 6 times 8 would work for us here. 6 times 8 is 48. And 8 plus 6 is 14. Looking at our signs, because that 48 is positive, the only way to get a positive is if they have the same sign. But since the 14 is negative, that tells me these are both going to be negative. Which means we can then use our zero factor property to split each one of, each one of our factors up, set them each equal to zero, and solve. So when we do that, we get x is equal to 6 and x is equal to 8. Both are positive, so everything is good there. So those are our two solutions for that equation. The extra stipulation for this question said for each question, find the sum of all solutions. So if we add these together, 6 plus 8 is a grand total of 14 there. Otherwise, that's it for this video.